Guys, we're gonna do another speed test, and in case you wonder why the image is so bright today, well, last time it was a bit dark, so I figured this time I should make it a bit brighter. First thing we need to test is an amplifier. Here's a Yamaha, uh, four times 20 watts uh, power amplifier that you can use in four separate channel mode or in stereo mode. I'm not sure which mode it is in. I'm not even sure if it works. That's the idea of the testing. So I'm gonna plug it in, turn it on. It says power and it doesn't say four channel mode. I heard the relay click. We have speakers hooked up and a source. Let's see if we get any. Well, that works. So I just hooked up a CD player and it immediately started playing a CD with one track. Ooh, it's Dream Dancing by Ray Anthony and his orchestra. That's not very quick. Another CD player. We actually have plenty of other amplifiers to test as well, but now that we have one that works, may as well go through the sources. There's a spring here, up there. So it's playing. It's hooked up to the inputs of the amplifier. Mm, no, it's not actually. There's another wire that's very similar here. That's the output of the um, sound card. There you go. So this mini disc, disc mini disc. So this mini disc I uh, bought at a thrift shop some time ago, and it worked sort of, not quite. I just gave the lens a clean. Now it doesn't even power on. Ah. Uh, I... Seems to read fine. Let's try recording then. Didn't come with a remote, but uh, for I think I paid 10 euros or something. I figured I'd give it a shot. Okay, so let's see if it actually writes the TOC. Does it do that right away or when I turn it off? Oh, Sony's do it uh, only when you turn them off. This one does it right away, so it seems to work now. Let's see if it recorded. Found another one of these. Let's see if this also has a crappy CD in it. No CD in this one. It is really dusty though. I think it's from a different owner. The other one was pretty clean. This one's horrible. So what I got here is a Philips record player. You can't see it very well, so I'm going to show it to you as such. I haven't tested it yet, but I did drop it, which doesn't happen very often, rest assured, but it happened this time. And uh, I uh, busted the dust cover. I hope it is still okay otherwise. It's a bit of a weird one because it's got a little sensor here that senses, you should watch this part of the record player, senses whether there's a 7-inch or 12-inch record on it, and you cannot actually choose the speed. So you're just gonna have to live with it unless you use it manu uh, unless you use it manually, of course. So let's see if this works. There's a sensor. It should now sense it. There's a seven-inch record. Go to actually, that's not bad. Uh, let's turn on my preamp and hope it works. Yay! Got pitch control. Working absolutely fine. Okay, there we go. Now it's gonna sense. Yes, it hit the record. And it's got muting even. You don't hear the kapunk. Power switch works, which is rare on a Philips. I can't see the, the stroboscope that's on the mat now, but let's uh, move this forward a bit. So I'm just gonna speed this clip up and here we go with the sticker remover. And let's hope it does the job because it looks gross. Oh yes, this be working. Looking a lot better already, there's still a bit left. That's so much better. So I got another record player and I just discovered something. I actually wanted to do this off camera, but it's kind of nice. Here's my screwdriver. So there's these screws that are for the hinges and the hinges were folded like so. And I thought they were broken, but they're, they're just fine. They just aren't screwed onto the player. And there we go. Despite my ill fitting screwdriver, this record player has a cover again. People who know their Philips stuff though, already know what's the next problem gonna be, except for dust. It doesn't have a power cord and those cords are notoriously hard to find and valuable so i'm actually going to solder a new cord on it because that's just the best option right now 
It may not be original, but it's definitely sellable. And, um, and then it should be fine. And hopefully otherwise it's fine. It's got a belt that looks all right. So what I think, because this sounds a bit weird, either, either there's something wrong with the cart or the cartridge holder, which I don't think. Let me see. We do have two channels. There may actually be an amplifier in this. These were sold with built-in pre-amplifiers, and this may be one of them. If that's the case, this should solve the problem, but I don't think so. I'm sorry to say that there's no pre-amplifier, so there's something wrong with either the wiring or the, the head shell or the cartridge. Now, this could be interesting. It's a little record player again. A Sierra, which is a Belgian division of Philips. It's just a Philips. There's no real difference. Um, but it's got, I think, a ceramic cartridge, which could be a problem because that doesn't work with modern amplifiers. Unless, and there may be, it, there is a chance that that's the case, unless it has, again, a built-in preamp. So I'm not sure if it's got a broken belt or if it's just not working in any other way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, geez. It's one of those belts that's gone all gooey. Don't you just hate it when it happens? Let me quickly clean it off just enough to test it with another belt. Although I don't think I have this belt. It's going to be a bot job again. We've got 33. I'm not even going to bother trying 45. We got a record. We got... Whoa, what the... F There's literally no stylus. It's just not, not in there. The whole thing is missing. So I'm surprised it made any music whatsoever. 200. Yes, that's the identical cartridge. It's SS, so it's made for mini groove on both sides it still has a flip over stylus but you uh, can't uh, pick you can only pick mini groove and uh, let's see what we get eee. so the problem is yep. the problem is it doesn't have a built-in preamplifier it's um it's a ceramic only, so you can only use it with an old tube radio. So this is quite a long note. It says, works, removed part of the belt goo. There's actually belt goo on the note, which is kind of funny. Uh, there's still goo on auto return, just ceramic. Just realized it may be ceramic. I'm not quite sure, I think it may be, but you know, I'm Dutch. So I have quite a few of these record players, like this little Philips FP260 here, that you put on top of a rack system. They're not very desirable, even though some of them are not that bad, but uh, I've got quite a few that are actually powered by the system they come with, and you can use power supplies, but they're usually like 15 euros, and I don't want to spend that much money on these, because I pretty much give them away, without exception, just to people who want a record player. Uh, so I'm going to test the ones that actually have uh, their own power supply, let's see what this does. I hear noise. I also hear the motor, which is really loud. Shocking, actually. problem they're not great but there's nothing wrong with them so I just tried to sell them for like 25 bucks or something but yeah pretty much the cleaning is more work than the thing is worth but I'm still going to because I hate throwing stuff that works perfectly away also this is a really weird adapter yeah I wasn't planning on doing this but already gave it a quick clean because it just looked really sad I mean come on it's gonna make someone happy it's gonna play someone's records it's not even gonna ruin them like many of those modern day crosses and it's gonna cost pretty much nothing these are actually quite lovable if you ask me my goodness, this one's in even worse shape. Look at this. What the hell? It's the same one, except this one doesn't have a power plug for some reason. I don't know why you would take them off, but people tend to do that. Just gonna give it a quick wipe because, yeah, it's uh, supposed to be black, not uh, medium brown. We got a really dirty inside as well. Again, gonna clean this before I do anything else because I don't want to get my hands on this otherwise. It's just too nasty. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want to get any weird diseases from it either. Uh, the, the support for the arm is missing. 
So this is going to be a really cheap one then. So I may or may not have just plugged the wire straight into the wall. Smooth. Not plugged in, so we're not going to get anything. Let's see, where's the... Ah, oh, there we are. Let's turn the volume down a bit. Speed's way off, but that's easily adjustable. Again, there's nothing wrong with it except for the missing support, which isn't a big deal. Ah! Maybe a big deal. I need to figure something out. <laughs> because obviously he's gonna land on the... Yeah. You didn't see it in the video, but that previous Phillips actually had really rusted uh, hinges. Uh, I think it's been in some shipwreck or something. I'm surprised it worked at all. This is a Sony, and I vaguely remember there being something wrong with this one. But I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I tested this before, a long time ago. Let's see uh, what it does, and uh, let's find out. It's actually a fully automatic one. It says start here. So... That's not much. Oh well, that, that was a bit of a delay then. Okay. That's... Uh... Yeah, so... Oh, here we go. God, that's a noisy motor again. Ooh, okay. Surprised that landed well. Ooh, ooh, that's not running up to speed. It's a mechanical issue. The automatic start is too heavy and it can't, uh, the motor can't uh, turn it. Uh, not gonna bother, not too big of a Sony fan and you know, it doesn't run up to speed very well, so I'm just gonna do what any thinking human would do. Take off the stylus, take off the adapter, 45 RPM adapter. Fight with this little clip that always hurts you out and gets under your nails. Yeah, I know you have tools for that. I know, I know. That's gone forever now. And take off the belt. I'm sorry, Sony, I'm sure you're fixable, but to be honest, I can't be asked. You didn't think I was already done, did you? Behind me is a pile of amplifiers, and when I say pile, I don't mean three or four, I mean 12. Also, for some reason, two CD players that I forgot before. This, though, is a good start of the second part of this video. I bought this uh, from an auction site, and actually the guy wasn't home when I could pick it up, or actually when a friend of mine could pick it up. So we put it outside in the rain in plastic bags. And surprisingly, it all stayed dry. Still have to test it though. It's been some time. We got power. We got, ooh. Oh, we already have sound actually. I didn't mean to test it that quickly, but you know, while we're at it, may as well test the tuner that apparently works. Oh yes, here we go. Yes, please. So the tuner works. I'm not gonna play it for too long because music rights. Ooh, it does run. It's a direct drive and it usually has issues with its speed control. This one seems to work surprisingly. Eh, can you see in the video? It goes wee 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 wee. Not sure what causes that. Does it do it 2 on 45? It doesn't even get up to 4. That's not 45. But since we have 33, no, we don't. That's 33 at 60 hertz. We have 50 hertz here, it's getting nowhere near 33. That's 33. Anyway, let's try. I shouldn't say 33 again. I'm gonna fail. Also, it's very, very soft. Ooh. Something's up with that cartridge, but that's not my main issue. My main issue is the speed of the record player. Let's see if it has adjustments. It's getting serious now. I'm heating up the soldering iron because I found a not strictly necessary spark killer on the verge of exploding. So I'm gonna take that out before it does. So yeah, that's fun. There we go. Before it dies, let's get it out. So I'm not quite sure which one is actually the speed control. That's a bit of a bummer. So I'm gonna have to try and see what it does. As you can see, it still works just fine. Um, 
let's see, we have 33. We are not even remotely running at 33. I'm going to set the pitch control to the center position. It still doesn't get nearly the speed it needs to get to. That's worrying, guys. This thing may need an overhaul, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but it's good to know, so this doesn't get up to speed or anywhere near its speed. Such a pity. The rest of the rig, though, works absolutely fine. So I'm going to clean that up and uh, obviously sell the tuner and the amplifier together, because come on. Also, can someone tell the people that I cry that 15 screws in the bottom of a record player is slightly overkill? Now, before I take this amplifier off the table, I first want to test this. It's a Philips CD7A1 CD player. Let's see, that's power on. Usually they do. Ooh, nothing! Ah. Nothing. That's very dead. Didn't expect that. So, okay, next. These amplifiers are gonna bore us all to bits because there's four of the fuckers. And the thing is, they are actually really good little amplifiers. It's just that no one cares about them because they look so 80s AV. It's even an audio video stereo amplifier. Uh, what did I hook it up to? I'm not sure. Something's coming in, so I guess. Ooh, that works rather well. Balance left. On the, ah, well, ah, I like this. When you press them both, it centers. That's intuitive. Now, what's quite cool about number two, three, and four is that they are all in their original boxes. I mean, uh, you gotta love that. Uh, even though it doesn't change how they work or anything, it's kind of cool to have a device in its box. Unfortunately, no manuals. This one is kind of the power cable. That's kind of cool. Just realized something while I hooked this one up. The other one came with a power cord, but they don't have detachable power cords. So I'm not quite sure what that is for, but I have a free bonus power cord. Now, this one's slightly more dusty. So this is the bit I usually edit out because it's boring, but I have to do it. Otherwise I won't know if they work. These should all work by the way, but I test stuff. You never know. Yep. Number four. These are reliable little amplifiers, especially the ones that don't have actual knobs and buttons, but micro switches. Those things are reliable. Now, isn't this cute? It's an old Philips amplifier, and I actually have all of the silver details for these knobs. They're stuck to the back of this machine, which surprised me because usually they're gone forever. So it's a hard one to test because it has only DIN everything, but I managed to hook it up to something. That switch works the other way around than you expect it to. That's kind of cool. We have some scratching. I only hooked up one speaker for a test. Let's see. Tuna. Ooh, that's not good. That's... Nah, it works on mono. There's something broken here. Oh wait, that one had it, yeah. It wasn't even on tape. <laughs> ah, lovely. So the input switches work as balance switches because tape is now nothing on left. Oh wait, 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 I have to plug the, the speaker around. Okay, woolly on left and good on right, and then I go to tuner, that's PU, there's nothing connected to that. Do we have anything on right? Yeah, woolly on right, and now we get clear on left. This isn't quite, I'm not even sure what it's doing, but it's, I mean, DIN can be weird. Sometimes the, the pin layout is different, but no matter how I hook this up, it's messed up. So cool little lamp, but it's dead, man. I'm pretty sure I've repaired and actually already tested this, but uh, I just want to make sure, because I didn't in any way label it. Hmm. That's not an awful lot. Oh wait, I just unplugged all this, of course. That's not gonna help. Nice. Completely silent. Let's test the CD direct then. So we have a CD with tone controls, and then we have CD Direct without tone controls. 
it actually sounds better even th through these speakers so that's a useful feature it's a pity the top is slightly messed up look I'm not sure what happened to this but that's quite wonky I guess uh, someone will like it it's, uh, it's in working order yep you're seeing it right that's not supposed to be this way I think these are pieces of junk to be honest but you know people seem to like them let's see if it works I'm not sure if it can be turned on without the remote Oh wait, there's two buttons. There's another one there. Ah, you see, Ooh, that actually works surprisingly well. Usually those digitizers are slightly messed up. We got, what did I hook it up to anyway? Uh, where's my screwdriver? Here it is. Okay. There we go. It's receiving radio too now, but no sound. Nope, no nope. pity. That is a dodo. Please press power key while this message appears in the display. I am, but I don't think this is working. I hope this works. There you go, we're out of the demo. Wow, that's a lot of, wait a second. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. So I'm not, not really someone who understands these kinds of amplifiers, but I should be able to get it to this. Oh, this is a bit dirty. Let me see if I can wake this up. Ah, here we go. It starts making sense. CD. No, CD. There you go. You know, it's a Sony QS, so it's quite a serious one, but then it has a bass boost button. How serious are you taking yourself, guys? That's just bullshit. Do we have stereo? Who makes this crop crap up? Who makes this crop app? Two channel. There we go. Mode. I have no idea what this all is. Right. That appears to be working. That's very, very precise. It has to be said. Kind of cool. Ooh, that's an annoying frequency. So if I put it up, I should be able to... Wait. Yep, that's how it works. Yeah, that's probably higher than these shitty speakers can... But this will also work as a... Yep. Parametric equalizer. That's kind of cool. I'll just go to... Okay, we got a, we got a channel. <sighs> it may as well say syntax error for all I'm worth. I don't like these things, but it does seem to work well. It doesn't sound great, but it's... Uh... It's a neat looking thing and I think people love it and I don't get what this contraption is supposed to do but it's it's got a button that says execute. I guess. There you go. It's a Philips FA951. Quite a serious amplifier. It even has a, a an MC phono preamp built in which is weird for an amp of this era. I didn't plug it in yet. It does power on. I'm not sure what the auto select is but let's try CD. We got two channels. We got tone control. That all seems fine. Still not sure what auto select is. Doesn't matter. Recording selector. Who is that? Oh, wait. That's kind of cool. I can choose what to record, what I'm going to record from. There's a few lights down. So. I think I was on CD, right? There we are. So everything works except for these few LEDs. So tuner is out and CD is out. It says digital here, so I think it may have um, it may have a DAC built in. Does it? Yes, it's got a coaxial digital in and out even. I may test that with a CD player later, but uh, this thing seems to work. It's a pity it doesn't look better because it's, uh, it's a serious beast. It doesn't even sound to, seem to sound too bad for a 900 series, so it's got my seal of approval. It's a 900 series, I don't mind. Now, what better amplifier to test this CD player with than the FA951? Uh, it's a Philips CD940, also quite high up. Tray open. No, it's not, actually. These tend to open with a little help. And now it's convinced it's closed. That's all right. I'm just going to see if I can make it work. 
Yes, it says reading or reading. That was very quick. Uh, I think I hooked it up to Tuna, which is this one. That should let's play anyway. Wow. Here we go. Level seems a bit down. Why is it so soft compared to the other device? Am I right? <laughs> Definitely. So it seems as though this doesn't really give a proper output. Huh, I've never seen that before. Okay, does the fader... See? The fader, it's like it's stuck at a very low level. I should find a remote for this one, give me a sec. Okay guys, it's gonna be an unboxing because this is actually new. Let's see if a combination of sheer luck and experience saves me today. Ah, I hope to keep that bag in one piece, but I think not. Ah, there we go. It's a brand new Moran's remote. And uh, Moran's in these days was owned by Philips, so this stuff is generally compatible. I'm not sure what CD player this belongs to, but usually that doesn't really matter. Uh, I think these actually... Oh, it takes AAs, not triple A's. Wait, let me get some. I hope these still have some charge. Let's see. Does it pause? Yes, it does. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. Will the volume solve the problem? There you go. So that's the thing. I used to have a Philips CD 721, 23, 723. I bought it new. And it came with a remote and it had the same thing where you could only change the output volume with the remote. And I realized I shouldn't use it because what if the remote breaks? What do you do? Because the damn thing remembers it, even if it's been in storage for years. So I think if I just leave it like this, I don't even have to give the remote away with it because I don't want it because it's my only Philips CD player remote with that option right now. Um, it, it won't be an issue. People will never notice, but it's something you need to know. Let's try the digital input of the amplifier though. I now know what auto select is. See, automatically goes to digital. So if all goes well, we should now have a digital connection. Ooh. Well, we don't apparently. Um, let's set it to auto select again. And plug in. See, there it goes to digital. So it does work, but the, I think, um, as it goes with these things, the digital analog converter is dead, which makes it unsellable, which is a pity because it's a good amplifier. But uh, what do you do? So I did open up that CD player and it's actually a mechanical fault. There's a cog wheel broken. It's not the belt, I hope it will be, but it's not. So I'm going to put this back together and put it on the DOA pile once I found my screwdriver. Oh, here it is. Philips always uses these uh, torque screws for some reason. It's really annoying. Remember this one? It's not the same actually, it's another one. Here's a sticker from the thrift shop. I dare to pay 25 euros for this, which is actually a lot for a thrift shop, but it says it's tested. Well, we'll decide that. This is not coming off, I'll figure that later. Does it power on? Yes, it does. Display looks promising. Do we have a music source? Yes, we do. I think I hooked it up to aux. Let's see if everything works. Yes, it does. I think this will work. Ooh, counterface. I messed up somehow. Yep, I did. There we go. That sounded horrible for a second. Oop, battery died somewhere during that test. Uh, sorry for that. Um, so we decided it needs a clean because it's a bit off. Let's do that. So I'm actually not using contact cleaner because that will in the end ruin your switches. I'm just using alcohol. It won't clean them as much, but it will actually work. And if you don't hold them upside down, <laughs> the dust won't and the dirt won't come back. Not easy to get into either. Not even sure if this is gonna work to be honest. Ah, that was in my eyes. So here we go. Obviously the song is over. That's now solid. OK, 
Okay, let's turn the speakers off and see. We got two channels. We got two channels. We got two channels, and we got two channels. No hiccups there. Approved. Last but not least, guys, this cute JVC combo. It's a pity. It's uh, lacking the balance knob. But other than that, it looks really good. I just cleaned it quickly because it was gross, but it does look good now. Tuna doesn't seem to be doing very much, to be honest. Oh, wait, we got something. Ah, actually, there's no power light. It's just stereo indicator and a signal indicator, even a stereo slash signal indicator. I think I hooked something up to Ox. There we go. You know what the fun thing is about these, because I've seen them before, they don't sound bad. They just don't. Hmm. It's a bit of a weird one, but it works. You know what? I call that a working tuner. But it is a bit more uh, finicky than most tuners. So this all works, phono works. Wow. Something's uh, interfering again. Cheap amplifiers tend to do that. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this all works. I like this little thing. It's a pity there's a a knob missing, but it's a, it's a cute little amplifier. I'm going to uh, leave it as is, and I'm sure someone can live with that. And with that, we conclude this series of audio testing. It was quite a bit, but if you think that was all, you're mistaken. I think we're not even halfway. Uh, the rest is in storage though, so the rest is going to be filmed in a grimy basement, so that's going to be fun. Um, but for now, this was all. Now I'm going to have to edit all that stuff, and that is a lot. Good night!